Dr. R. Sugurat Samuel is working as professor in physics in SRM University, Chennai. He is also training students for IIT JEE, AIEEE and BITSAT. He has more than 16 years of academic experience both in teaching and research. He has published a book titled The Complete Handbook of Bachelor of Electronic Science Practicals. It is prescribed book in the syllabus for BSE Electronic Science by University of Madras. He has attended and presented papers in several national and international conferences and conducted many training programs and workshops. He has experience in both regular classroom teaching and also online teaching. His research areas are ultrasonics, polymers, crystal growth and photovoltaic systems. Welcome to UGC lecture series on Applied Sciences Electronics. We have been listening to a series of lectures on the subject Electricity and Basic Electronics for the BSc Electronic Sciences degree program. This is the first paper in the first semester. This lecture is the 48th lecture in the series. In the last lecture, we have learnt about the H parameters. We have not gone deep into the mathematical aspect of the H parameters, but we have seen what are the various parameters that normally we take for the circuit analysis. I have given you the brief about the various parameters like the Z parameter and Y parameter and H parameter. The H parameter is the hybrid parameter which relates the character of one from the input side and a characteristic feature of one from the output side and even the current and voltage were mixed in the formulation. That is why the H parameter is a very famous and important parameter. In this lecture, we will see some of the mathematical aspects of the H parameter and we will try to meet the objective of learning the H parameter that is how to draw an equivalent circuit for the transistor. So, before we start today's lecture, let us have the session outline of this lecture. In this session, we are going to see the significance of H parameters, the transistor equivalent circuit and also the H parameter for common base and common collector modes. First, let us learn the significance of H parameters. In the last lecture, I have introduced the concept of two port network. The current from the input side and voltage from the input side form two variables and similarly from the output side the current and voltage form the other two variables. Two are taken as the dependent variables and two are taken as independent variables. By using the mathematical technique, we could formulate some of the expressions, may be the ratios which have much relevance to the terms that we come across in the transistor circuits like the input impedance, output impedance, voltage gain, current gain etcetera. Each parameter differs in the way we take the dependent and independent variables. That concept I have covered elaborately in the previous lecture and the importance of H parameter also has been seen in the previous lecture. In this lecture, we are going to see the importance of H parameter, why the H parameters are important, mainly the significance. Let us see the significance of H parameter and then go ahead with the mathematical aspect of finding or calculating the H parameter. So, let us see the significance of H parameters. The following are the significance of H parameters. They are real numbers up to radio frequencies. 
they are easy to measure they can be determined from the transistor static characteristic curves they are convenient to use in circuit analysis and design easily convertible from one configuration to another readily supplied by the manufacturers the important features are highlighted in the slide that we have seen i would like to highlight two important features one is the main advantage of using h parameters is the third point which i have shown they can be determined from the transistor static characteristic curves we need not do anything else further to find out the h parameters we have learned how to draw the characteristic curves for transistor namely the input characteristics and the output characteristics how do we draw some of the data some of the information from the characteristic curves that we have learned elaborately actually if we map the terms that we come across in h parameter are very much correlated to the information we gather from the two characteristic curves from the input characteristic curves we could find the input impedance and also the voltage gain those two are the two h parameters that we have seen just now maybe in the previous lecture similarly from the output characteristic curves we could determine two factors one is the output impedance the other one is the current gain these two are also again the two other h parameters so from the characteristic graphs the h parameters could easily be calculated the other significant features are also important but this i wanted to highlight and one more thing when we get a transistor from the market we need to know certain factors about the transistor maybe a transistor is identified a number those all we have seen when we learned about the transistor for example bc107 is an npn transistor when we purchase this transistor from the market we should know certain features about the transistor already they are available but the manufacturer should provide some information about the transistor maybe the type of transistor whether it is npn pnp so it's an npn transistor and then what about the current gain voltage gain all the information should be available if they are provided in the form of h parameter that has much relevance to the circuit design so that's why the h parameters are very important they are readily available from the manufacturer of the transistor and other points are also important in the significance that we have come across now now it's time for us to learn how to draw an equivalent circuit for the transistor with these h parameters how do we convert a transistor into an equivalent circuit so we are interested in that aspect only the h parameters are very much helpful in replacing the transistor with the parameters that uh, replacing the transistor with the parameters that we have just now learned so let's see how we can draw an equivalent circuit for a transistor the equivalent circuit of a transistor can be drawn using simple approximation but by retaining its essential features these equivalent circuits will aid in analyzing transistor circuits easily and rapidly i would like to recollect the two port network v1 and i1 are the input variables v2 and i2 are the output variables so a transistor should also have this feature intact when we draw an equivalent circuit right now we have four h parameters with us one is the input impedance the other one is output impedance and then 
the current gain and voltage gain may be if not in the direct form the gain if it is not may, uh, taken directly at least the inverse of the gain the forward gain and reverse gain like that we have four parameters. Now, the two port network just now we have seen two inputs and two outputs and how it has got relevance to the transistor that also we will now see and then go ahead with the equivalent circuit for the transistor. Now, let us see a typical transistor and correlate the two input variables and two output variables that we have considered. Let us have a look at the transistor circuit now. This is the transistor circuit. So, here I b is equivalent to the I 1 that we have seen in the two port network. Similarly, V b is equivalent to the V 1. Here, the V c is equal to equivalent to V 2 and I c is equivalent to I 2. Let us quickly see the variables we have taken in a two port. This is how we have taken and their equivalence in the case of a transistor also now we have seen. Using the four H parameters, how we could draw an equivalent circuit for a transistor? It is time for us to learn about it. Now, let us have a look at the H parameter equations and try to see how we could replace a typical transistor with an equivalent circuit which contains the four parameters just now we have learnt. To derive the hybrid model for transistor, consider the CE circuit shown in the figure. The variables are IB, IC, then VBE and VCE. Just for simplicity sake, we are taking them as VB and VC. The VBE and VCE are taken as just VB and VC because it is a common collector circuit, it is it is known. So, we have we are dropping the second suffix that is E. So, I B V E are considered as independent variables. So, this is how we have formulated the H parameter making a Taylor series expansion around the quotient point I B V C E and neglecting higher order terms the following two equations are obtained. This is how we expand the expression when we have the I B and V C as the independent variables and V B and I C as dependent variables. So, we have just done the mathematical treatment to the function. Here partial derivatives are taken and the delta is nothing but a full derivative instead of using d, d v b or d i b like that, we have just taken delta representing that it is a variation that is possible in the term in the particular value. So, we are using them, but it has the same meaning as del, the, the full derivative. Now, when we further go ahead with the simplification, the equations we obtain are the partial derivatives are taken keeping the collector voltage or base current constant as indicated by the subscript attached to the derivative. So, the delta V B, delta V C, delta I C and delta I B represent the small signal or incremental variation for the base and collector voltages and currents. They are represented by the symbols V B, V C, I B and I C. Finally, we get an expression involving the H parameters. When we use this mathematical treatment and finally, write the expressions for the dependent variables which we have taken here, we get the various H parameters partly without giving the mathematical treatment. We have got the same expressions in the previous lecture also may be the suffixes are different in the previous lecture, but now they have much relevance to the transistor circuit. So, let us have a look at the equations and this is the final expression we get for the two independent variables V B and I C. 
and automatically we come across the h parameters appearing here and here what is h i e? This h i e is this derivative finally we arrive at the v b divided by i b which is nothing but the impedance on the input side the b here refers to the base emitter side. So, the constant v c here this v c is to be taken as a suffix which is telling it is maintained constant. Similarly, here also I R E is the voltage gain, but taken in the reverse manner. Why I am telling reverse manner? When we say it is gain, it is output divided by input, but here we have taken that as the input voltage divided by the output voltage. So, we will call that as the reverse voltage gain and this expression finally is simplified as the current gain output current which is I c divided by I b. So, it is called forward current gain and this is the output impedance which is the I c divided by V c, but it is not directly taken as the impedance it is the admittance because the inverse of the impedance we are getting here. So, this H O e is called the output admittance because it is taken in the inverse of inverse form of the impedance. Now, these four H parameters are called by specific names which I have mentioned. So, let us see them all together what are the names by which these H parameters are called. The H i e is equivalent to the H 1 1 term which we used in the previous lecture is called the short circuit input impedance and H R e is equivalent to the H 1 2 which is called the open circuit reverse voltage transfer ratio or it is called reverse voltage gain also and H F e is equivalent to H 2 1 the short circuit forward current transfer ratio or forward current gain and H O e is equivalent to H 2 2 which we saw in the previous lecture it is called the open circuit output admittance. Why do we call them as open circuit output admittance? Similarly, the first H parameter is called short circuit H parameter short circuit input impedance. It is because the of the condition that we maintain when we say it is a short circuit impedance input impedance something is shorted something is connected together. What is connected together? the side is connected together and we measure the impedance. And similarly, the last one is open circuited output admittance that, that means there is a disconnection something is open something is not connected. So, it is called open circuited it is because of the conditions that we impose when we measure the variations. So, with these four parameters H parameters how do we simplify a transistor into a equivalent circuit. Now, let us recall the two equations that we have involving the two, uh, two equations involving the four H parameters. Here, the first equation is V b which is H i e multiplied with i b plus H r e multiplied with V c. This first equation appears as a sum of voltage terms with V b at the port the right hand terms H i e is a resistance which has potential drop of H i e i b and H r e is a controlled voltage generator whose output is dependent on the voltage at the output port. So, what do we infer from the first equation? The first equation is nothing but a voltage equation the V b is equal to two terms we have one having a parameter H parameter another having another H parameter. The first H parameter has a potential drop of H i e multiplied with I b I, I c. The second equation has a voltage ratio form it is H r e multiplied with V b. So, how do we Inter interpret them. It is nothing but 
the summation of voltage. So, this is vital for us for drawing an equivalent circuit. This we will keep in mind. Now, we will get the interpretation for the second equation which has the current on the left hand side. This is the equation I c is equal to H F e I b plus H O e V c. The second equation states the sum of currents. The current I c enters at the output port and H O e V c leaves through the resistance which is 1 divided by H O e. H O e is the output admittance. So, we take it as the inverse term here to mean the resistance. The other term H F e I b is leaving current due to the controlled current generator. So, second equation is a current equation sum of summation of two currents results in a current which is the current drawn from the circuit. So, we have one equation with the voltage another equation with current. How do we use them for replacing a transistor with an equivalent circuit? These two equations have tremendous significance in simplifying a transistor into the equivalent circuit that we have been long waiting to have a look at the equivalent circuit. Now, let us have a uh, equivalent circuit of the transistor and this is the long awaited equivalent circuit. Only for drawing this equivalent circuit, we have even learned all the H parameters. Now, I would like to explain the circuit elaborately. The first equation involving the voltage. So, this is having the voltage part V B which is equivalent to V I here. This is the I B represented as I 1 here. So, the V 1 is the product of these two and the product of these two with the summation. So, it has the potential drop of H 1 1 this is the input resistance and this is the current that is flowing and another term which is the voltage generator. The voltage generator is represented by this symbol in electrical circuits. So, it is H 1 2 V 2. So, the first equation takes care of this part which is the voltage term and surprisingly when we have a look at the output side the second equation is highlighted. It is a current equation. We had I c which is shown here as I 2 and which is equal to one current generator. What is the current generator? It is I 1 multiplied with H 2 1. H 2 1 is the forward current gain. So, this is the current generator and this is again the current term H 2 2 V 2. If you multiply this H 2 2 is the admittance, admittance multiplied with voltage will give us the current. So, that is how these two supply current to the output current that is marked here as I 2 which is equal to I C or the collector current. So, we have clearly seen the two equations that we had for understanding the H parameter have very much they, they are very significant for drawing the equivalent circuit for transistor. The first equation takes care of the input side in terms of voltage and the second equation takes care of the output side in terms of current. That is why it is called hybrid parameter. In hybrid the current and voltage are intermixed so that we get advantage of drawing a transistor as a very simple equivalent circuit. Hereafter for all the circuits that we analyze a transistor will be dealt as a current source and a voltage source just now we have seen. So, let us have a look at the equivalent circuit once again and understand how the equivalent circuit is to be drawn. So, this is the circuit. I have correlated each term with the suffixes here to the typical transistor variables like I B, V C E and I C V, V B, V C E and this is V B E like that 
each term could be correlated to the actual transistor parameter terms. And is it possible to develop the transistor parameters for the other modes of operation? Let us quickly have only the circuits and the H parameter for other modes are also possible. The above equations define H parameters of transistor in CE configuration, the same theory can be extended to transistors in other configurations like CB and CC mode. And the equivalent circuits I would like to show in the next slide. Transistor parameters for CB and CC modes are also available. So, this gives us the gist of the equivalent circuits for other modes also including the CE mode, but in CE mode only the transistor is very often used because it has got much advantage in that mode. Migrating from one mode to another mode is also possible using the H parameter. So, I have concluded the H parameter concepts with this lecture and we will see the session summary of today's lecture. In this session, we have seen the significance of H parameters and the transistor equivalent circuit and then the H parameters for CB and CC modes and how we could migrate from one mode to another using H parameters. Now, it is time for us to test our understanding of what we have learned today by answering these questions give the significance of different H parameters, draw the equivalent circuit of transistor in CE mode with the help of H parameter, draw the equivalent circuit of transistor in CB and CC modes with the help of H parameters. With this, I would like to wind up today's lecture. Thank you for listening.